power story. Is there a method behind the workings of the Aam Aadmi Party? Also, more importantly, how crucial is it for the morale of the party for Arvind Kejriwal to win the Delhi municipal elections? Some of course will say these are only civic body elections, but most parties are also seeing this as a semi-final to the Delhi polls and Kejriwal knows that after the Goa and Punjab verdict, if he has to maintain his hold on the capital and also make inroads into other states, he needs to win these elections pretty badly. The Delhi Municipal Corporation elections have certainly seen a lot of high voltage action with each party pulling out its big guns to campaign for what is essentially a civic body election. Why is that? What are the stakes here? Why is there so much pressure on these elections? Before we answer these, here is some perspective. The Municipal Corporation of Delhi is the capital's largest civic body handling 8 of Delhi's 11 districts. Currently, the BJP has a stronghold on this, but the Aam Aadmi Party is hoping to repeat its stunning win of the 2015 Assembly polls when it swept Delhi. In fact, some would say that Kejriwal is treating these as a semi-finals for the Delhi Assembly. For Kejriwal, the most important thing is being empowered. At the moment, the Aam Aadmi Party and, the, and Kejriwal himself feel disempowered. And that is the factual position in Delhi uh, as Chief Minister, you really are pretty much an ornamental figure. So he wants to get out of that and he wants to control real power. And real power comes either from the MCD or it comes from Parliament. So because of Delhi's peculiar position. So he is taking the municipal corporation elections very, very seriously. and. Uh, and frankly, they have done uh, quite a lot of work, but they have been constantly stymied by the municipal part of the of the work that, that they are trying to do. So also from the point of view of uh, administration and logistics, it makes sense that the same party would, should control the municipal corporations as well as uh, the De Delhi government. In other words, a party that is ruling uh, Delhi should have control over the municipal corporations. Otherwise, we've seen the complete mess the city has been thrown into for the last, uh, uh, what, uh, past one year or more. Uh, only because of uh, petty conflicts and, uh, you know, um, um, uh, egos, egos have been at work and so on. And, uh, I mean, just recall how smoothly the whole structures ran when Sheila Dixit was the chief minister. She was there, the municipal municipalities were, of course, under the BJP, uh, controlled by the BJP, but somehow there seemed to be a pretty fairly harmonious kind of uh, relationship. With Kejriwal, I th think the BJP is determined to needle him for no, uh, for, uh, for no ostensible reason. But there is a reason because uh, Kejriwal was after all the first to challenge and to an extent even demolish uh, Modi's image after the 2014 polls when he had this runaway success in the Delhi polls. And I think uh, the BJP leadership hasn't quite recovered from that so far, which is why they, there is so much at stake for them in the MCD polls. I mean, normally you wouldn't expect a party which is ruling the centre and so many states, including big ones like Maharashtra and UP, to take such an interest in a micro-level local poll like Delhi. It is largely a triangular contest between the BJP, Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party. But entering the fray are also two spoilers, Nitish Kumar's JDU and Yogendra Yadav's Swaraj Party. The fact that the Aam Aadmi Party has not ruled over the MCD until now has seen much finger-pointing between the BJP and the AAP, with each blaming the other for non-performance, such as what happened when sanitation workers went on a garbage strike in East Delhi last year. The strike was due to non-payment of dues to the employees. The Delhi government blamed the MCD for this, while the MCD claimed that the state government was not releasing the funds in time. Now, the Aam Aadmi Party is claiming that if both bodies have the same leadership, it would ensure a smoother working atmosphere. This, of course, is also part of the larger case for full statehood. I frankly, I don't think he has, he has even a uh, hair's chance of uh, managing to get full statehood. Because uh, Delhi is a complicated place. It has or it houses all the embassies, all the uh, diplomatic missions. It houses a whole lot of uh, very high security uh, zones, uh, which have to be under the direct command of the central government. And we have known in many areas in in the world, capital cities have been in the direct under direct federal command. So it's not so easy. And frankly, I mean, it doesn't really matter. 
instead of trying to get full statehood for delhi if they were only to do all the things that they say that they should they are going to do that would be enough full statehood might just make things a little easier for the incumbent government whoever is in power so that uh, there isn't this kind of conflict between uh, the local bodies and the government of the day but finally you didn't see any of uh, i mean these fault lines didn't creep in when the congress was in power so there is something good that the congress obviously did i mean though the an opposition was in control of the municipalities uh, sheila dikshit probably had a very different style of working so in case the aam aadmi party doesn't get control over the mcd kejriwal will also have to amend his style of working make himself more uh, adopt more conciliatory positions and likewise the bjp should accept the fact that kejriwal is there for an, for the next 4 years or whatever or the next 3 uh, years and allow, give him some leeway you know after all he's an elected chief minister he... in this apart there is a bigger question at stake for kejriwal and his men they need this win to ensure relevance and survival the recent punjab verdict certainly was a rude wake up call for the aam aadmi party This was an election that was theirs to lose, and lose they did. There was a definite anti-incumbency against the ruling Akali Dal. The Congress was too busy setting its house in order initially. It waited till the very last minute to declare the captain as a CM face. The AAP had the early mover advantage. It initially had the people's support as well, especially with its promise of a change from governance as usual. All was going smoothly. There was even talk of Kejriwal himself switching to Punjab so that he could finally rule over a full state and appointing Manish Sisodia as the Delhi Chief Minister. Then suddenly things began to go wrong. The Aam Aadmi Party started to behave just like the Congress. Fights broke out over ticket distribution and chief ministerial aspirants. Even before the polls were won, they started fighting over the spoils, and decision making was all outsourced to the high command in Delhi. I think it's much more complex than that. uh aam aadmi party had a very good chance people were coming out of their homes to support their rallies to they were bringing food to their rallies and so on but at the end of the day it was always the issue of pind of your family your sikh identity your your uh, uh, your your appeal to the people uh, so they tried and uh, but there was a lot of centralization there was a lot of uh, people's uh, at the local level people's voices were not heard i think the congress heard them much much more closely than than aam aadmi party frankly uh, and uh, i think they homed in on one part of the plot but forgot the other one uh, the idea of restructuring punjab's economy how it should be done what should be done next Uh, uh appeals to people who are uh, drug addicts and parents and families is one thing but it's the economic model which you have to change and i the issue of uh, river water sharing and all those things were very are very complex issues and i don't think they address them as seriously as they should have. share from secondary uh, evidence i mean malwa was one region where they were expected which they were expected to sweep and even that i think they just did well in uh, certain parts you're right i mean the fact that they didn't uh, declare a cm candidate uh, the fact that uh, kejriwal had uh, kind of all, uh, nearly unveiled his ambition to become chief minister of punjab you know that i think probably went against the party and also the presence of uh, the nris from canada in instantly reawoke memories of the whole khalistan era i mean the aam aadmi used them in a big way thinking they would bring in the resources the political heft but in fact it worked against uh, the aam aadmi party so uh, punjab has certainly been a huge setback for aap i mean they were also hoping to pick up seats in goa and that didn't happen at all they didn't even open their account in goa so all in all the last assembly elections have not brought good news to aam aadmi party but was the defeat so bleak 
There is also a view that at least Kejriwal got the Aam Aadmi Party to open their account in Punjab. That at least he was able to emerge as the main opposition party displacing Akali Dal that had been in power for the last decade, even from the mantle of leader of opposition. Remember, this is a state that Kejriwal had not ventured into until the Lok Sabha polls of 2014, when his party won four Lok Sabha seats, despite the Modi wave. Then did Kejriwal misread the voter? Why did he lose Punjab? Was it the lack of local leadership and also the lack of an organization that did him in? Punjab was a loss because uh, four seats out of 13 in the Lok Sabha elections is pretty damn good. And you expected to build on that. I suppose you did build on it, but not to the point where you could say that I have arrived. And uh, that was a that was a loss. Uh, if the Akali Dal had not been in such a poor political position, it's possible that Aam Aadmi Party might have come down further from the Lok Sabha tally that it had. So, um, I think they need to work harder and they need to address the, 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 the shortcomings in Punjab. They have a, an opening. The question is what they're going to do with it. Yes, I mean, they, I mean, it's a question of a bucket half full or uh, half empty. I mean, I would say that yes, 20 or whatever, 21 seats, but his vote percentage was the same as that of the Akali uh, BJP coalition, uh, which meant that after all the hype, Kejriwal didn't make such a mark. And uh, just as the BJP is investing everything in the MCD polls, the Aam Aadmi Party also invested hugely, huge political stakes in. Punjab. So I'm sure he looks at it in, uh, from a different perspective than uh, what you are suggesting. For him, it is a setback. He was hoping to be in power. I mean, he was probably hoping to migrate from Delhi to Punjab as the chief minister. And I'm sure the cadre, the AAP cadre, the AAP members are demoralized. So for Punjab has been a big setback. Then there is the state of Goa, where Kejriwal's team could not even open their account and win a single seat despite exit polls and the high optimism of the party predicting a win. Not just that, 38 of the 39 candidates fielded by Kejriwal lost the deposit. Not quite the showing they had expected and had planned for. Some leaders had even began scouting around for CM candidates from the Aam Aadmi Party camp. What went so wrong here? Well, Goa, frankly, I mean, I don't think they ever had much of a chance in Goa. Uh, I don't know why they contested because it was very clear to everybody that uh, they didn't, uh, they weren't really present in Goa. The assembly polls have definitely rung a warning bell to Kejriwal's plans of going national. He has to first consolidate before he can afford to expand. That is why these Delhi MCD polls are so crucial. He has to retain his home turf before venturing into further territory. He is quite an unpredictable person. And he, I think, uh, the Aam Aadmi Party has uh, delusions of grandeur about itself. Uh, he told me that uh, we are digging, well before the Punjab elections, that we are digging so quietly at the roots of all the opposition parties, both the Congress, the BJP and the Akali Dal, that they will never, they won't even know what hit them. Because when they try and mobilize their workers, the the, the it's a hollow tree and it will just topple over. Now, that hasn't exactly happened. So, we have to see now what he does. But classical uh, political strategy tells us that you need to consolidate before you can expand. You know, every time he plans to go national, he did it, if you recall, during the Lok Sabha polls. He went to Banaras and he contested the election against Modi with so much fanfare. He had... Uh, um, you know, an activist kind of at his service and so on. And he failed to pull off anything in uh, UP, okay, I mean, uh, UP or in the rest of the country, except Punjab. Again, he won quite a few Lok Sabha seats. So Punjab looked promising for the Aam Aadmi Party then. But in politics, I think you have to calibrate your ambitions, I mean, you know, very carefully. First, work on your stronghold, consolidate your position. I mean, what is the point if he allows Delhi to wither away? That the little that you have also goes away and you will have no capital at all. So, Kejriwal should have, take, make a realistic assessment of his own party's strength. 
The BJP is all too aware of this, which is why it has also gone in for a change of face in the Delhi leadership by replacing Satish Upadhyay with Manoj Tiwari a few months back. It has also decided not to give tickets to incumbents, which will help it fight the anti-incumbency factor. Firstly, in the past, I have never seen so much interest in an MCD election. So that in itself is a is a unnatural. BJP has decided on Manoj Tiwari because uh, of the Purmachali population. Um, he was not at all keen to take the job, but once he was appointed, I think he has launched himself in it with aplomb. uh so bjp is trying to uh, redefine or reinvent the party and uh, i think the old guard of the bjp is not cooperating at all with uh, the new appointees so we will i think see very very unpredictable results they're not giving tickets to incumbents because they've been ruling the mcd for years and what a mess they have made I mean, logically, in the fitness of things, the BJP should be voted out. But Amit Shah is experimenting. He's bringing in new candidates. He's uh, pressed a high-power team into service: Nirmala Sitaraman, Vinay Sahastrabuddhe, and so on. And they've kept uh, some of the old timers like Vijay Goel out of the campaign, thinking that his face may not gel with the people. So they're trying all kinds of things. They're fighting the um, elections with the same energy and resources as though it were a, uh, an assembly poll. So we just have to see how it works. At the macro level, there is definitely a huge buzz about Modi after the success in the assembly elections. At the micro level, these sort of factors are kicking in. You know, whether uh, the candidate is suitable or not, and whether there is rebellion. There was rebellion against quite a few BJP candidates, but yesterday I was told that Nirmala Sitaraman and Vinay Sahastrabuddhe they spent hours and hours talking to them and convincing them. uh to kind of lie low at least till the elections are over after which they will be accommodated in places other places if should they win the mcd polls the congress is staying on with ajay makhan under whose leadership it lost the 2015 polls but makhan is being groomed to be the congress face in delhi and has consistently led the party's charge against kejriwal unfortunately for him however he is facing some dissidents from the old guard that still owes its allegiance to former chief minister sheila dikshit well to be honest i can't think of any other name for congress in delhi because uh, although there has not been that kind of an hemorrhage uh, when uh, i remember the i mean this is only an mcd election but in uh, after the rath yatra uh the when the elections were held in up before that the it was only the the congress office that remained in across the state in up the flag that was flying from the congress office was actually was the bjp flag that was the level of defection that took place despite having so many setbacks we have not seen that in delhi actually we haven't seen it anywhere in india so uh and that delhi you can count delhi also in one of those cases so people have crossed over there is disquiet and there are misgivings and there are uh, murmurs of discontent but that kind of defection of institutional leadership of party i i'm not seeing that sheila dikshit is virtually out of the whole uh, scene Now Ajay Makhan's leadership is it accepted by everybody a, a senior person a veteran like AK Valia was on the verge of rebellion but he somehow been convinced to stay back so is the is the congress a divided a house i would imagine it is divided to an extent but i am told that individual candidates of the congress are very good and are likely to win on their own steam their own strength so uh, of course while it's a huge big te- test for ajay makan we also have to see how individual candidates of the congress fare but there are some doubts as to whether the cm was spending more time battling the central government in filing defamation suits raising accusations via tweets etc than in governing 
What has also not helped is reports that he wanted the taxpayer to pay his 3 crore bill to Ram Jethmalani for fighting his defamation suit. The findings of the recent Chunglu committee report also could not have come at a worse time for him. For on the eve of the crucial MCD polls, it has raised questions about the functioning of the AAP government, accusing it of nepotism, cronyism and flouting official norms to favour its own. Some of these charges are what Kejriwal has been raising against the BJP and the Congress. What makes the Aam Aadmi Party so different from the others then? But he, that, is, that has always been the case, hasn't it? I mean, Manish Sisodia is the one who read out the budget. He is the one who is given a very forward-looking, uh, education-centric uh, plan to Delhi's uh, Aam Aadmi Party government in Delhi. Uh, the Mohalla Murcha and the kind of things that they are doing on transport. Uh, are all uh, things that 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 may have been discussed with Kejriwal, but it's not Kejriwal who's voicing them. So Kejriwal is leading the political battle, and the others are leading the administrative battle. So that division has actually become uh, from de jure, it has become de facto. If you just talk to people, ordinary people, safai karamcharis or uh, street vendors who swore by Kejriwal not so long ago. Suddenly, they seem a bit disillusioned with him. And while they may not cite the Shunglu committee report very precisely, they uh, do say that he's turned out to be like any other politician. So the scales are falling off their eyes. And it is the failure of the Aam Aadmi Party to counter um, uh, such negative perceptions. I think Kejriwal should have figured out quite early on in his innings that uh, uh, credibility is something you have to sustain through hard work like Modi. Modi has sustained his credibility, I would imagine, through sheer intelligence and hard work. The moment there was this thing about suit boot ki sarkar, uh, the label that was uh, uh, put on the BJP by Rahul Gandhi, he figured out that yes, it is serious and it could kind of click and he immediately kind of got into the act tried to repair his own image tried to repair his own image and that of the party they abandoned the land acquisition act so while kejriwal and his aam aadmi party are doing good things on the ground in sectors like health education electricity tariffs have come down vastly so have water uh, charges and so on uh, credibility you know because aam aadmi party is synonymous with kejriwal it's so personality driven that Kejriwal should also take care to see that his personality doesn't get frayed at the edges. So is the AAP right when it alleges a conspiracy theory against it? It is true that both the BJP and the Congress would prefer to battle it out amongst themselves than have the AAP wrestle in on the political scenario. There have been rumours that once the Akali Dal BJP realised that it was not going to win Punjab, it did try to swing its vote in favour of the Congress so that the Aam Aadmi Party could be defeated. It's possible. I am not... Uh, it's, uh, it sounds very improbable. But it could have happened because of the vested uh, interests and the entrenched interests between the Congress and, and Akali Dal in Punjab. But I think it may be a little more difficult to do it here. Well, we need to take a short break. But after that, we are going to come back and take a look at Arvind Kejriwal's leadership trajectory. Our story. In this edition, we are going to be taking a look at Kejriwal's political trajectory and also try and analyze that in his second stint as Chief Minister of Delhi, has he been able to convince the people of this capital that he is not here just to disrupt but also to govern. So then can Kejriwal get out of his own image trap? How does he overcome his own mantra of disruption and go in for a more slightly stereotyped governance model? And is it a good idea for him to conform to a system that does have its flaws? No, but. I think that Kejriwal is uh, best suited for disruption. He is not a governance guy. He may have ideas about it, but if you expect him to be Gandhian and to sit back and, you know, uh, roll out programs and plans, well, he's not that sort of a chap. If Kejriwal does win the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, it would provide a fillip to his own party morale and give his Gujarat dreams some hope. For after Punjab and Goa, he has set his sights on Modi's home turf. But after this beating, the jury is out on that one. 
I think he should not dare to dream at all in Gujarat because I think uh, the outcome of Gujarat is uh, already decided. Um, I actually think that he should only dare to dream about Delhi and uh, with this round of elections coming to a standstill, much more attention needs to be given on emergent problems in Delhi. I think it's both Congress and Kejriwal, I think equally they know needs to win the MCD polls more than the BJP. It may be a local election, but it's already been hyped up uh, to the scale of a national election. And should he win, I'm sure he's going to head towards the west, towards Gujarat, and see what he can do. If he loses, then I'm sure his Gujarat plans are going to take a back seat, because the immediate thing he will have to do is some soul searching, some introspection, and find out what really went wrong. Well, that is the question that only Kejriwal can answer. Should he carry on with this collision course with the centre, which will of course create more barricades and checks and balances for him to deal with? Or should he continue with this governance model regardless and hope that finally it will strike a chord with the people of India who have after all been asking for a change? But is Kejriwal the change that we've been asking for? Well, that's a question for a latest show. But for now, that's all this week. Thank you for watching Cover Story. We'll see you again same time next week.